midway through the season, it's fair to say that the Bruins have been feasting. Sitting at 4-0, Cherry Creek's offense has been a dynamic part of their success. Much of that is thanks to the offensive line that we met with for lunch this week. This O-line is one of the best in the state, and they're ready to give Chaparral's defense one hard time at the Stutler Bowl in Week 5. This is the season. Well, tonight we're set for a battle between two drastically different teams. The Chaparral Wolverines head into today's contest with a record of 1-3. and three. Now, as for Cherry Creek, they're undefeated, a perfect 4-0. Oh. The toughest part of their non-conference schedule is over, but now is no time to let their guard down. From the Stutler Bowl, Kick is up, and it'll go all the way back towards the end zone, but not enough for the touchback. Bobbled around. Oh, Let's see who comes it. up with it, honestly. The might have it. They might. Oh, yeah. Yeah, does Cherry Creek oh, have it? Wow. They think they do. He drops back another pass play. He hits oh. Miller in the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. Yes, he does. Boy, if you're Chaparral, why would you leave Marcus Miller one-on-one -on -one coverage? It. Yeah, actually. He's and got Penry. Yeah, that's Penry once again. Penry in for the score. Just like that. 13 going on 14. Oh, the last week. That was huge. Padilla drops back. Finds a wide open receiver. Is that Vance Brazil? Yeah, it is. You can feel this from when you talk to people that are It's not often. Oh, wow. It. Pell hits Brazil for another touchdown. And just like that, Cherry Creek gets it into the end zone. Off to Walker, Walker advised for the pylon and he gets in. James Walker the third coming up with a huge touchdown for Cherry Creek. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls left. Looking for a man under some pressure, he's got to get it off. Able to, oh. and in for the score, is that right? Touchdown, Nico touchdown. Lebeer. Yeah, Nico Lebeer gets his first touchdown of the year. Cherry Creek went on to defeat Chaparral by a score of 49-7. But there was no rest for this team as they got back to work quickly in a different kind of way. It's really chaotic and it's like difficult to get their attention and get them to focus because like somehow so. everything yeah. is funny. In an annual homecoming tradition, the Bruin seniors participated in a dance choreographed by the Palms team that may not be technically sound but is always entertaining. They're really <laughs> fun though and it's funny because they're like, hmm. I never thought it'd be this hard. Like, yeah, it's really it funny. helps them have an appreciation maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also fun and it's it's really cute to see them get yeah. so excited when they like finally get in front of the dance down. And they actually get really into it. They're like, I want to call, 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 call. And they like yeah. scream at each other in a million different places.
after the homecoming festivities were over, it was time to get back to business. The football team hosted the Overland Trailblazers on a cold night in late September with the biggest crowd of the season on hand to witness the game. Cherry Creek got off to a hot start and never looked back. The Bruins led 31 to nothing at halftime, but the score didn't reflect the hard time Overland gave the Bruins though. Both quarterbacks threw their first interceptions of the season and the Blazers sacked the quarterback twice. In the end though, that didn't matter much as Cherry Creek won by a final score of 45 to 0. Cherry Creek improved to 6 and 0 on the season. The following week, we met with the offensive line to talk about the essential role they play on the offense and the team as a whole. Alex can't get the ball off if we don't give him protection. You know, Jay Lee or Seamus can't run the ball if we don't open up the holes for them. So honestly, you know, we can't gain yards if we're messing up. Yeah, and I tell them every day, we don't go if we don't go, is what we say. With, a, with offensive line, they don't get a lot of pop. They're, they're guys that are, I categorize as blue collar guys, kind of lunch pail guys that got to just come in and punch in and punch out. Um, but they're probably one of the most important groups on the field. I mean, you have to get five guys working together on every play, which doesn't happen all the time. And if you get a breakdown there, then sometimes the play isn't successful. So to be honest with you, um, a lot of coaches out there understand the importance of the offensive line. They're just not in the paper very much. While the team has a solid offensive line now, it wasn't always that way, especially when these guys were a lot younger. You know, a lot of them come in, as we say, they're kind of like Bambi on ice. They really just can't figure out how to really put things together. And, you know, our philosophy here is if, you know, we don't care what grade you're in. And if we see some potential in you and we're willing to maybe take some bumps and bruises with you early, and but foreseeing what the future is going to bring us, um, these kids have come a long way. Now that I'm a senior, I'm, I'm one of the older kids on the team. Um, I kind of see how I've shifted from being that guy who is asking questions to the guy who's helping others with the questions. It's kind of shifted from being the, the puppy, if you will, to being that the older guy. As these guys have matured skills-wise on the field, they've also learned how to deal with the pressure of playing at a large 5A program. I feel like you can't treat the big games any different than the small games because I feel like the more you treat it like it's such a big deal, the more it gets in kids' heads like, holy crap, if we don't, if we don't kill it this week, it's like the end of our season. We just treat it the same. Coach Logan said the same thing, you know. They've got guys that would play here. We've got some guys that would play there. Now let's just see who's the best team to go out on the field. You know, I'm People don't, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but we don't play for the league t-shirt. You know what I mean? Uh, we strive to get down I-25. And it kind of gives you goosebumps because I've been fortunate enough to be able to coach in some state championships and, and to be one of the two best that's able to make it down there and have a chance to be able to host, host the trophy up at the end and say, um, you know, we did it this year. That's kind of the, the motto that we went with, you know, in the summertime. and. I mean, we just have to strive to get down I-25, and when it gets tough, always remember that motto. And, you know, when you're grinding in the summer and grinding in the weight room, that's what you're doing it for. The team knows that goal, and they also know it'll take a team effort to accomplish it. It's, it's not about me, me, me. It's a position that you really have to have a team amongst the team. And just to see these kids grow up and, you know, naturally becoming leaders, um, it, it's been pretty cool and really proud of them. Teamwork is one of those lessons that connects football to life off the gridiron. After all, some things in life are just more important. Football is just a game. That's a lesson that the Bruins learned the first week of October. Today, Arapahoe High School opened its doors, but not one class was held. Yeah, it was a non-academic day allowing students there, as well as staff and parents, to grieve and get support. That's because in the past five days, two students from the senior class died. 
The two Arapaho High School students died within the last week as a result of suicide. The school's principal sent out a letter today saying it was a difficult day. She said the school is trying to wrap its head around how and why two of its students would kill themselves. The school said it is now trying to provide the safest environment possible. Fox 31 has also learned that Arapaho High School's football game has been canceled on Friday. In a letter sent home to parents last night, Principal Natalie Permenko said, it is important that we come together tomorrow and in the days ahead to support one another. Hug your kids and tell them you love them. Our kids need us now more than ever. Our hearts go out to everyone affected by the events at Arapaho. The game against the Warriors resulted in a forfeit win for the Bruins, though that was the last thing on everyone's mind. We'll catch up with Creek as they prepare for Eagle Crest next time on The Season.